This near miss could have been a tragic accident. Mel, Tom's supervisor, may have saved Tom's life. Why did this incident happen? At first, it seems obvious. Tom was using a personal stereo in a situation where it was inappropriate and dangerous. But there are other questions that need to be answered. Why was the crane operating when Tom was working close by? Why did the crane operator not see Tom and stop the crane in time? Is this incident worth investigating? After all, no one was injured and there was no damage to equipment or property. Why not just reprimand Tom, confiscate his personal stereo and get back to work? What just happened is called a near-miss incident. An accident is defined as an unintended event that results in injury, loss or damage to people, property or equipment. A near-miss incident is defined as an unintended event that under different conditions would have resulted in injury, loss or damage to people, property or equipment. Research indicates that for every 600 near-miss incidents, there will be 30 minor accidents, 10 major accidents and one catastrophe involving serious property damage, major injury or death. Near-miss incidents are useful predictors of potential accidents. Proper reporting and investigation of near-miss incidents can reduce the number of accidents when organisations act on recommendations from near-miss incident investigations. In the case of Tom's near-miss incident, his supervisor Mal insisted that they complete a near-miss report and forward a copy to the plant's occupational health and safety manager, Anne Dawson. Anne investigated the incident not in order to punish anyone or assign blame, but to achieve specific safety objectives. These objectives are to determine the root cause or causes of the incident, identify any unsafe conditions or unsafe acts, identify any unsafe procedures which contributed to the result, develop and take corrective action to prevent a similar incident or accident reoccurring. Anne's investigation raised several issues. Tom is a relatively new employee and thought the crane could not travel into the area where he was working. He thought a lockout tag out procedure for the quick job he was doing was unnecessary. Tom's use of a personal stereo prevented him from hearing the crane warning siren. Tom had not been told of a specific company ban on personal stereos. The crane operator, Jim, said he just didn't see Tom. He complained of poor lighting in the plant and of a blind spot that prevented him from seeing clearly into the area where Tom was working. Anne reported her findings to a meeting of the company safety committee. She found the root cause of the near-miss incident was the noisy factory environment combined with the fact that Tom was using the personal stereo, preventing him from hearing the crane's warning siren. The committee discussed the incident and agreed to implement Anne's recommendations, including warning lights to accompany the crane siren, improved lighting in the plant, regular eye testing for all employees whose jobs require good eyesight, such as crane, forklift and truck drivers, retraining in lockout tag out procedures for all relevant employees, improvements to induction training for new employees, including information about banned items, such as personal stereos, jewellery and watches, installation of signs in the plant to reinforce these rules. Janet, the employee who noticed that the photocopier was unplugged, 
plugged it back in and tried to use it. When the copier failed to work, Janet, who was in a hurry, walked away to find another photocopier. Janet didn't think to unplug the copier. After all, there was no warning sign, nothing to indicate that the machine was faulty. Brooke, the employee who noticed the burning smell coming from the copier the next morning, checked the machine and found it was very hot. She did the right thing and made sure the machine would not be used again until it could be properly checked. Brooke reported the problem to her supervisor, Glenn. Glenn investigated and found that a service technician had been working on the copier the previous day. The technician had been called away urgently and had left the copier unplugged but without a sign to warn users that the copier had a potentially dangerous fault. The thermostatic control, which prevents overheating, had developed a fault. Plugging it back in could have resulted in a fire, particularly if there had been a significant power surge. Fortunately, no injuries or damage occurred and the service technician returned and replaced the thermostat. Glenn, the supervisor who investigated the incident, completed a near-miss report. Glenn's employer is a university whose near-miss reporting policy requires the completed near-miss report to go to the area business manager for comment. The business manager then forwards a copy to the occupational health and safety manager. June, the business manager, sent a fax to the copier service company giving them the details of the incident. She requested that their technicians provide appropriate signage to warn people when a copier is being serviced and asked them to implement a system that would prevent people attempting to use or even plug in copiers in similar situations. The company responded positively. Glenn raised the issue at the weekly departmental staff meeting. The Occupational Health and Safety Manager raised the issue for discussion at the next Safety Committee meeting. Is this incident worth investigating? The people involved, Sam and Nick, didn't think so. No one was hurt, no real damage was done. These things happen, it's all just part of the job, isn't it? No one reported the incident and no one investigated. If the incident had been investigated, the quick fix solution would have been to install convex mirrors to enable employees to see around blind corners. Further investigation would have revealed that one of the root causes was poor employee training. Sam, the storeman, had never been trained how to correctly use a pallet lifter. Pushing the pallet lifter instead of pulling it obscured his vision. Nick, the forklift driver, was under pressure to meet delivery schedules. He worked long hours and rotating shifts which affected his concentration. The long-term solution would involve redesign of work schedules and possibly the employment of a second forklift driver. But this near-miss incident, along with several others, was never investigated. Everyone continued with their bad habits. Until one day... <laughs> Organisations have an opportunity to use information generated during near-miss investigations to evaluate the effectiveness of their safety programs. A near-miss investigation should not be used as an excuse to assign blame. It is designed to determine the root cause or causes of the incident, identify any unsafe conditions or unsafe acts, identify any unsafe procedures which contributed to the result, develop and take corrective action to prevent a similar incident or accident reoccurring. You may need to cordon off the scene of an incident to preserve any possible evidence. You should communicate results of all investigations to all company locations. A near-miss investigation and report is a great opportunity to learn from an accident that almost happened and to find and eliminate the causes of the incident. Is your corporate culture one of complacency and fear? 
Are employees and contractors scared of reporting incidents for fear of being labelled troublemakers? Hazards will escalate if incidents are not reported. Encourage everyone in your organisation to report near-miss incidents with the aim of improving workplace safety and reducing injuries. You can't learn from a near-miss unless the incident is reported and investigated. The near-miss pyramid shows that if an incident occurs in your workplace that could have resulted in injury or property damage, you have just been given a warning. A warning that something is wrong with your policies, your processes, your equipment or your attitude. You may not be given another opportunity to fix the problem. The next incident could be fatal.